Okay, everybody. Today's video, we're gonna do a high mileage review on this truck. It's my 2013 Ford F250, 6.2 gas engine, 7.3 gears, and it's two wheel drive. So if you wanna see how many mileage I have on this and what we actually do use this truck for, it's been an amazing truck. I think you'll be quite surprised to see how bad my bed is beat up from picking up all the stuff. But a lot of you guys that watch my channel know this truck and you guys like it. Yeah, it's not the Tonka truck, but this is my work beast, the best tool that I have. And it makes me the most money. A wise man once told me, once you know how to make money and work hard, You'll never be poor. Well, this is how I make my money. All right, guys, there's my high mileage review of my 2013 F 250. It's a 6 2 gas, two wheel drive. It's a 373 gearing. And I've owned this truck since it was almost new. Now, this truck has been used mostly for work. Um, it's a little beat up. It's been in a lot of, uh, it's had three previous accidents. One, I rear-ended a lady from the front. As you've seen, it was a little bent up. Another one, a lady T-boned me on the driver's side, and I slid off the road and hit a tree with this side and uh, messed up the front. But we're out here picking up scrap metal today, and this is what this truck is mostly used for. It's got the hydraulic lift gate and everything, and uh, see the hitch? It actually, we tow a lot of, with this truck trailer and everything. It's been very good, very reliable. It's got, it just went over 220,000 miles. And those have not been easy, you know, cruising to the mall miles. See, we got a little bit of rust here and around the wheel well, you'll see some, but it's only on this side. This side was replaced. So everything on this side of the truck, doors, fender and hood was replaced during the accident when the lady T-boned me. So that's all not all original. The hood's not original either. That got dented and uh, smashed in on the other one, uh, on, on the other accident, from when I slid off the road, like I said. But this truck has been die-hard reliable. So the only things we changed were coil packs, because everybody knows Ford has coil pack problems, and spark plugs, twice in it already. And this has 16 spark plugs in it, so it's got the ones that go down the front, and it's got the ones that go down through the, by the exhaust manifold. But it's all original. I mean, the radiator's been changed due to, due to the accident. The uh, air conditioning uh, coil in here has been changed. And you see my front bumper's a little banged in from when I rear-ended that girl. Uh, I chose not to fix the truck. I'm just going to get an a aftermarket bumper or a used bumper. And my grill's a little broke right here, which I have another grill. But this truck, uh, I put, when I put, see I messed up. When I put brakes on it, now brakes are very expensive for these trucks. I went to CarQuest and got the professional rotors. Now these, this being two wheel drive, it has the old style bearings. In the rotors, they were pressed in uh, races already. And I thought about it and I knew it was gonna be an issue. And I let it go. So what ended up happening, not even six months later, or about seven months later, this um, race failed on this side, chewing up my wheel bearing. Now, this truck, that was its only, it's ever, and it's only ever had, this would be its third set of front rotors on it, and 220,000 with the original ones on it. And they were the original bearings. I changed them every time, put, greased them up, put the original bearings back in. So this doesn't have the original bearing on this side. But the other side does have the original bearing of 220,000. When I say all original, alternator, starter, I mean, obviously the battery's been changed. But everything is 100% original on this truck, uh, minus the coils. But that's regular maintenance thing. These trucks have bad coils to begin with. They get all corroded and stuff in them, and it causes a misfire. But I noticed when I started it the other day, my daughter had the door open and it sounded like my exhaust manifold on that side was leaking a little bit when it first starts up. It makes a little bit of noise. It might be the donut gasket, but this has got all original exhaust on it. And on the inside, 
on the inside guys the windows all still work the um, rear view mirrors all still work this door lock does not work see I'm hitting the button it doesn't unlock the doors anymore that side works this side does not I changed this switch it still does not work so I don't know if I have a wiring issue I'm starting to get little stupid things like that now as time goes on being that you know this trucks 11 years old the other thing is is my steering wheel button sometimes I hit this button up to turn the volume and the volume just goes all the way up and then I can't shut it off sometimes it doesn't work at all so that's one of the little things now go through the information thing as you can see, with towing and driving around, we're averaging 10.7. But I've been starting the truck and letting it warm up. It's been cold, as you see. There's snow on the ground. So I, I start this truck, let it warm up for a long time. And I usually don't really shut it off. So that does have an adverse effect on the fuel economy. Usually it's about 13 in the summer. All right, what else do we got? There's the mileage. 220,100 miles. And you see it's 31 degrees out, which is a little bit warmer than it's been. Those are all trips. All right, now we're going to do setup. Oh, and you see my tire light is on. I don't know if I have, being the cold, the tire pressure uh, came on the other day. About a week ago, I checked tire pressures and they're fine. So I don't know if one of the batteries is bad or if, um, you know, uh, one of the sensors finally gave up the ghost, which I'll have to find out which one it is and change it. But let's do a systems check. There's my oil life. Engine hours. 7,000 idling hours, 2,000, 7,600 hours on this truck, guys. And low tire pressure. It's going to do its doingy doing. But yeah, so we'll do that again so I can show you. 7,600 hours and 2,023 idle hours. Oh, that's actually pretty funny. It's 2024, but that'd been pretty funny if it was 2024. But yeah, guys, other than a couple little random things that just stopped working. Uh, this truck's been, I know it, I know the tire pressure, I know, but just that switch, I don't know if there's a wiring gremlin, I mean, it doesn't really matter, because the doors don't really lock or unlock, like, that's locked right now, I usually just use the key to hit it, unlock it, if someone has to get in, but the worst part of this truck is, is the bed, you know, there's no rust under the doors or nothing, and being as salty as it is, you see there's a little bit of, there might be a little, little bit right here, but this truck, for being a northern truck in northeast PA, has fared very well. Now the rear leaf springs are starting to get tired. I had some weight in there the other day, brake rotors and stuff, so I noticed it was squatting a little excessively. But this truck's had this 500 pound lift gate on it its whole life. Lift gate's about 400 pounds, Tommy Gate, G2, and it, it has an adverse effect when you're driving. It makes it feel a little skittish and, you know, when you have weight on the back. But the truck goes good in the snow being two-wheel drive because it has the weight. But the worst part is the bed. I wish you could actually even see it. The bed is the worst part. So we're going to be putting a new bed on this truck. This truck is definitely getting a new bed this year. We're going to take the lift gate off, put a new bed on, put the lift gate back on. And we're going to see if we can push this beast for another... 100,000. I, th I think I can easily get another 100,000. Transmission's good. Transmission's been serviced. You know, I tra tra uh, tr uh, bleh, service the transmission every 50,000. Whether it looks good or not, guys, 50,000. That's it. Fluid is cheaper than metal. And I have no issues with the transmission, no issues with the engine. Been doing oil changes every 5,000 with um, semi synthetic um, motorcraft and the motorcraft filter. Not a problem. I have a K and N drop-in filter that I clean because dusty roads, and you know I, I was changing a, the regular uh, cartridge air filters every like six months and throwing them away, and they were fourteen, fifteen dollars a piece. So I bought the K and N. Actually, this is the K and N air filter out of my old truck, out of my old two thousand eight two fifty that had four hundred thousand miles, and I put it in this truck because it was the same. So that filter now has almost six hundred thousand miles on it. Nah, probably about 550,000 miles on it and it's still perfectly fine and cleans up nice and easy I think this um, was towing the other day and I was getting a trailer warning from this and it looks like that one prong in there you see it really looks clean and rusty looking it was bent and I had to bend it back so I might have to order a new one of these 
which I change every now and again because I'm always backing in and hitting it. You can see the brackets all bent. But that's more for that's more stupid error. So if you're getting that when you hook your trailer up and you're getting that uh, uh, trailer disconnect or wiring fault, it's got to be it's this plug. And you can order this plug here from E Trailers, and it disconnects here in the back from the wiring harness. And if you need this wiring harness, they sell that too. It goes up and plugs in underneath there. Well, it's all greasy in there. That's why this truck don't rot. It's always so greasy. But yeah, I think it's like eighty to hundred bucks for this factory plug-in piece and i think that wiring harness is like another 70 or 80 bucks but yeah guys these are awesome trucks the 6.2 gas engine is an amazing engine it's a little thirsty but you see we we run uh really good snow tires you know being we're two-wheel drive now this has the newer wheels on it these wheels came off of 2020 uh, i bought them on uh facebook marketplace with new tires on it i put the tires on my other truck and put these ones on they've been on for a few years uh these rims seem to be a little bit sturdier i don't know if they're heavier duty than the original ones that come on these trucks but all of my rims were bent and all of them were like eight ounces i bought these wheels and put brand new tires on them and they came up zeros now after about you know 70 or eighty thousand miles they're starting to get two or three ounces i don't know if it's the roads of pennsylvania well, i know it's the roads of pennsylvania and uh also um uh, hauling a lot of weight makes them it, it just bends them up when you hit shit but yeah this has bilstein shocks on it and stuff but yeah i did this same video a few uh about a year and a half ago and i don't remember the mileage but i think i put forty thousand miles on it in a year and a half and uh my other yellow truck takes some of the brunt of this you know usually this truck this truck would have over three hundred thousand if it didn't get t-boned that took six months to fix and I ended up buying another truck to, to, to keep working. And then when I slid off the road and crashed the front of this, that was another three or four months. It got T-boned during COVID, parts forever. This one, there was um, the one frame ear was a little bent. They had to bend it back where the, where the hook is there. And uh, it took a couple, couple months to get it back. So all in all, this truck out of its life, probably about, about nine to 10, 12 months or 11 months of it was probably... It, I know it was, it was like 11 months, 12 months, almost a, so about a year. It was broke down, not broke down, but it, it was getting fixed and it wasn't driving, occurring any mileage. The other truck was. Now my yellow 250, since I bought it, I put on about, I think that's about 70,000. So that 70,000 miles would be on this truck right now. So buying the other truck took the mileage off the bigger one. And I used that for towing and everything also. But yeah, guys, I hope you like this video. And if you see these trucks in the used market, they're good trucks. A couple little things you got to look out for, but that's anything. If they don't have service records and people can't show you anything, then you know what? That goes for any vehicle, not just a Ford truck or anything. If they don't have service records, don't buy it. Unless it's a very really good buy. You know, I was just looking at a truck, not to replace this one. I'm going to sell my other one and buy a 19 or a 20. Uh... A Luma Duty, so it's, a, it's the same exact truck, same engine, but a little bit different transmission. This has the old diesel torque shift transmission in it, which has its advantages and disadvantages. You know, it, it, when it's cold and it, if it's not towing anything, it doesn't like it. You know, the torque shift G, which is the gas uh, transmission they came out with, it's the same transmission, but it's built f specifically for the 6.2 engine, where this transmission was built for the old diesel engines. This was built for the diesel Scorpion engines and uh the six seven uh fords and it, it's a good transmission but it, it, it's it's not made for this particular engine and setup that was made that transmission was made for the diesel yeah it was it was designed for this truck too and that engine but it, it's not as well made as the newer one so we're gonna stay away from the 10 speed and go with another six two and and it, which they updated with different cams and different intake manifold and stuff which gave it a little bit more torque in 2017 so that's the next upgrade i'm going to get but i'm going to keep this truck i'm going to put a lift gate on the new truck and i'm going to use this one for all the towing and nasty stuff and keep the other truck just for doing the side stuff and more of the family go-getter for a while but yeah guys awesome trucks you can't go wrong a few things you got to look out for some of the stuff i said you know and it also depends on when you're buying them used if somebody you you don't know what parts they put in it and a lot of times people put the cheapest parts in. 
They put the cheapest rotors on. They put the cheapest shit in it. And they put the cheapest coil packs in there. They order on Amazon and get the, the $200, you know, set of eight coil packs that are made in China that are garbage. And then they, you keep having problems. You're like, oh, this truck's a piece of shit. It keeps doing this. Oh, it keeps eating alternators. Yeah, but you're using the crappiest parts. If you use the junkiest parts, see, if you buy this truck with somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, see, fleet-owned trucks like this, this was a fleet-owned, and then I bought it, I had a stack of maintenance records, and then I bought it, I have a stack of maintenance records for this truck, and that's the difference. When you buy it from somebody cheap, or somebody who don't have money to take care of it, they throw the cheapest garbage parts in it, and, and then when you buy it used, that's what you get, you're getting the cheapest garbage parts, so it's not the truck's fault, and that goes for cars, too. I've seen some cars that people like, you know, like a Toyota Camry. Be oh, Toyota Camry is the best car you could buy. Not if they didn't take care of it, and not if they put the cheapest parts in it. They go to Rock Auto and buy the cheapest garbage parts, and, and they're they're making the vehicle actually inferior than when it was. So used vehicles, you're only buying as you what you're buying is you're buying the maintenance schedule from the previous person. So if they were cheap and they didn't have a lot of money, and they hammered the shit out of it, we know what's going to happen. You're going to get a piece of junk. And it's not the vehicle's fault. Most vehicles are good nowadays. It's the cheap parts they buy. I usually try to only install dealer parts. Sometimes that's not an option, but you know, or at least better quality. Like my other truck, the start, the Ford Starter was um, for the for the 150 was 400 dollars. Couldn't find it anywhere, so I had to go to um, I had to go to AutoZone. And get their Duralast professional ones or whatever it was. Not professional, it was uh, but it was the better quality one. It was a brand new one, not a reman, not a Chinese new one, but an uh, uh, a new one. For, it was made in Mexico, but I put it on. I've had no problems. So that's the thing. If you put cheap parts in a car, and people put cheap parts in a car, you're buying a vehicle that has cheap parts in it, and it will break because cheap parts do break. Because if good parts break, cheap parts will definitely break. But all right, guys, I hope you like this video. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see some of the stuff this truck has pulled and towed and what it does for a living and makes me tons of money, this is the best tool and the best investment in my um, in, in my work thing, in my work. This is the best tool. A, tr a truck and well-maintenance truck will make you tons of money. doesn't matter if you're a roofer, a plumber, a contractor, you, 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 know, you, you tow excavators and stuff. Your truck is your best tool. So why not take care of it? Why not buy the best thing you can? But all right, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Check out some of my other videos. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see my yellow Tonka truck. I'll be doing another one of those videos shortly. But all right, guys, I hope I'll see you on my channel commenting, and I'll talk to you guys later.